The fact there are people who support Donald Trump that have resorted to violence and what some might call at the very least intemperate language is actually nothing new. We've been talking about it on this show for months as a source of truly fair and balanced coverage, giving you the vote of the chance to make your decision on what you're seeing and hearing. But over the weekend, the New York Times put together a video package of some of those moments they have witnessed, every word unedited, every picture as it happened, and turned it loose on their website for all to see and take in, which we and other outlets use to talk about what this tells us about supporters of a certain candidate. Of course, that's after a good deal of editing, because this remains a place where language and inferences such as what have been used in this video will not pollute these airwaves. Still, it's reignited the conversation about the Republican presidential candidate, angering Donald Trump's followers who claim they are being misrepresented, delighting those who claim this is what Donald Trump has wrought. But first, John Bachman sets the stage. John? Well, Ed, if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say it at all. At least that may be the rule for the New York Times when it comes to Hillary Clinton. The front page of their website today, of course, mentioned Donald Trump's economic speech, but it doesn't say very much about Hillary Clinton, and it hasn't about her recent issues, you know, the short-circuiting of the truth and whatnot. And now even the New York Times seems to be admitting that they don't know how to cover the Trump campaign. Americanism, not globalism, will be our new credo. Donald Trump in Detroit on Monday. But among the coverage of Trump's economic speech, an open question from the New York Times' own Twitter feed. Do normal journalism standards apply to covering Donald Trump? Well, I guess it depends on how you define normal. God bless Donald Trump. The Times recently posted this video on their webpage. It shows Trump supporters, quote, expressing views in angry and provocative ways. Now, to the New York Times' credit, they do mention, quote, not everyone attending a Trump rally behaves in this way. In fact, many are polite and well-mannered. There's an obvious double standard here. Has the New York Times spent more than a year compiling video of Trump protesters expressing their views in angry and provocative ways? Recently in Pittsburgh, a Clinton supporter lit a flag on fire near a group of Trump supporters and then attacked one of them for trying to put it out. Last month, Paul Jones Jr., a veteran supporting Trump, was shot in Cleveland over a political argument. And remember that woman who was egged in San Jose, California? Those are parts of this story that are missing, according to Brandon Tatum, a police officer from Arizona who recently attended a Trump rally. And he had this to say about the protesters he saw. Yeah, the people are the most hateful, evil people that I've ever seen. I could not believe what I saw. Well, one thing that sticks out from that New York Times article is the question that they asked. Do the normal standards of covering a presidential candidate apply to Donald Trump? The answer is yes, and the answer is also no. Uh, Gallup last year noted that only four out of ten Americans trust the mass media. Now, if the New York Times uh, is just promoting that Trump video without the other side of the story, Ed, I would say that they're probably contributing to the fact that there is a lack of trust in the mass media from American people. Back to you. All right, John, let's go ahead and get to work, then get some opinion here. First, she is the former Pennsylvania Republican representative, a veteran lawyer and strategic communications consultant, Melissa Hart. Joined by the Democrat, who has turned his support to Donald Trump, president and CEO of Benefactor Financial, Frank Congemi. I want to thank you both for joining us. Uh, Melissa, let me go ahead and begin with you. That video that the New York Times has up on its site right now has a lot of, they've gone over the last year and they have looked at Trump supporters, and we've just detailed some of the things that have been said. Is it fair? Uh, no. Um, you know, the facts are the facts. You can't argue with the fact that some people have gotten into tussles with the media and with each other, and there's been all kinds of negativity. But, you know, honestly, there hasn't been less in the Bernie Sanders campaign. They do focus on that, I believe, in the Trump campaign even more than normal. And I know the gentleman in Pittsburgh who was attacked by a, a, a Clinton supporter at that rally, and he said, you know, he wasn't doing anything at all. So, you know, a lot of times they're just being attacked by somebody, too. And I think it's being covered as if the Trump supporters are doing something wrong. Frank, is it bias in your opinion or is it simply put that Donald Trump supporters seem to have gone over the edge to so many people? Well, you know, you have to look at what you're watching and you have to look at the reason why it's being uh, broadcast. Um, just from my knowledge, knowing how many um, we'll call them protests for profits are being paid for by the DNC. Just look at what's happening inside the DNC and why there is so much turnover. There are things that are happening that media is broadcasting that actually doesn't exist. 
It's the perception that's being created that there is unrest, that there is dissension. And everybody's talking about it. They're not talking about Donald Trump's economic package today. When you talk about a perception of unrest and dissension, isn't there a lot more than a perception here? Because it seems we're seeing the video evidence that we've got some real angry people out there on both sides. That seems to be a little bit more than perception. Well, when you have a, data, a database that's left over from the election from Obama running both times, you know, these people have idle time on their hands. So they've been put to use organizing uh, protests throughout the country. And so what happens is you have legitimate protesters and then we have some professional fascists and some, uh, some professional agitators that are in there to whip up the crowds. Um, is this 100% of the time? No. Uh, but I know that these same people put a lot of the protesters into Donald Trump's uh, uh, engagement today uh, to disrupt. And that's what's been happening in the entire um, uh, primary. And that's what's going to happen in the general. And it's going to get worse. Well, listen, let's go ahead and get to perception and reality, the questions again. The perception is from many outlets and also from many people on both candidates' sides is that there are defections. Matter of fact, Politico had a story talking about a fresh batch of Republicans defecting to Hillary Clinton. Then today, there's a story about 50 top GOP national security officials signing a letter opposing Donald Trump. Michael Chertoff, Tom Ridge, Michael Hayden, John Negroponte are in here saying that Donald Trump would be the most reckless president in American history. Do you agree with those who say that there are mass defections and that these defections from the Trump camp would actually consider voting for Hillary Clinton? Well, I think you're going to have a lot of those people who probably wouldn't vote for Clinton, but they are afraid of Donald Trump. You know, a lot of the people you mentioned are, are more Republican establishment types, and I know Tom Ridge very well, but that's always the way Tom has been. There is a fear of someone taking over and maybe being successful also. Uh, if, if Donald Trump would win this election and he would appoint professionals to handle the job well, there's a possibility that he might do a good job as president. Why should we, we fear that? No, let me, I bet you just said that. Why should we fear that? Because if somebody is actually going to come out and, I mean, I personally bl believe this country is pretty great right now. But if we're going to make it even better, why should we be afraid of that? Well, I don't think we should be. But I think the people who, who own the Republican Party heretofore fear that. And so what we have is this sort of group of establishment Republicans who don't want Donald Trump because they think he'll fail or they think he'll succeed. They just don't want Donald Trump because if he wins, that is the end of the Republican Party as we know it. If they do believe that if he fails, and there were a couple articles that have been written by different uh, more establishment Republican thinkers that are suggesting that we need to make sure Donald Trump loses and loses big because they fear, again, that the party will never be the same. Now, I don't want the party to be the same. I don't want the Democratic Party to be the same. I, I think most people out there who aren't necessarily longtime Republicans or Democrats are unhappy. There's a lot of unrest. So uh, the perception is also the rule. It's actually the reality here. But I think what you're seeing is, is, is a real tug of war, I guess, between the people who want real change and the people who want just enough change to make it look like they changed something. I got about two minutes left. I'm going to hit both of you on swing states here right now. A minute apiece. First of all, Frank, to you from Florida, there seems to be a consensus, or at least from some polls, that Donald Trump is now failing in Florida and that Hillary Clinton is, is gaining ground and actually exceeding him. You agree with some of those numbers? I think mathematically it would be impossible for Donald Trump to lose Florida from the standpoint that only two counties in all of Florida are Democratic, Broward, and Dade. Uh, and even if a large portion of um, the remaining counties uh, somehow miraculously went for Hillary Clinton, it would be very hard for Donald Trump to lose Florida. Um, you have other states like Ohio, I understand, is in the play, Pennsylvania. But then again, those are working uh, class states, uh, very dependent on jobs. And I think a lot of people are going to be going for uh, Donald Trump. They may be saying that they're voting for Hillary Clinton because... You know, I've seen people get into almost fisticuffs in restaurants over this conversation. It's not, you can't, I can't discuss my positions with my Democratic friends to say that there are precedents for Democrats voting for Republicans. They just need to perhaps watch other news media and find out about it. I got about 30, 40 seconds left. Melissa, former Pennsylvania Republican representative. Pennsylvania is also in play as well. People believe that Donald Trump may lose that state. You're thinking. Well, I think... 
right now we have a few months ahead of us but you know today just today i ran into a democrat who who made a statement to me that she she was definitely going to support donald trump so you know there's there's people out there they're all over the map people are thinking for themselves uh, but I, I would hope that the media would cover more of the substance and not all of the brawls and whatever else uh, happens out there. So we can really get to things like Donald Trump's economic message of today, where he wants to change the system. So we're going to encourage growth here in the United States. What a concept. 15 seconds, Frank. Did you like the economic speech today? Economic speech is great. And I think that uh, both Republicans in Washington, D.C. and Democrats are uh, quaking in their boots. Uh, the president wasn't able to work with Congress and Senate. It. His entire legacy is going to be overturned with a Republican presidency. And from both of your lips to God's ears about <laughs> focusing on the issues at this point and stop worrying about all the extra foo sitting on the side. Frank and Jemmy, Representative Melissa Hart, thank you so much for joining us. I hope we get a chance to thank do it again. Much. From a broken car taillight to being taken to the morgue. Think about that for a moment. We'll talk law enforcement next on The Hardline.